Wormholes are nonsense. This is another one of my fictitious physics series where there are many physicists who talk about science fiction like it's science when it's really fiction and it shouldn't be talked about like it's science. And you've probably seen images of a wormhole, which are formally sometimes called an Einstein-Rosen bridge, since Einstein and Rosen wrote one of the solutions, where they have a black hole and a white hole that join together at their point of singularity, essentially, so that if you enter the white hole, the black hole, then you can exit the white hole, where they is hypothesize that there's such a thing as a white hole in which everything escapes rather than a black hole where nothing escapes. Which black holes that are singularities are nonsense and white holes are completely nonsense. I could do another video on that, but it wouldn't take long to just say white holes are nonsense. Now, this theory has a lot of problems. At the most fundamental level, you have Einstein's biggest blunder, perhaps. Space has no dimensions by itself. Einstein assumed that space is non-physical. It has no ether, no quantum field, and if you look up the definition of space, space is a balanced region that contains all matter. Space by itself is not physical. But in order to have physical lines drawn into something, you need something physical there to draw on. You need something physical to carry the dimensions and something physical to have real physical clocks or at least clock rates. Space doesn't have that. You have to have something else that has that. And what has that actually is the quantum field, which is the most fundamental thing within space is a quantum field, and it has wavelengths and frequencies, so it has dimensions and clock rates. And that's where they come from. They don't come from space. Space does not curve. It doesn't contract, it doesn't expand, it doesn't curve, it doesn't warp. Space is just, as I say down here, all we can presume is it's geometrically flat by itself because it doesn't have any substance. So, right off the bat, we're talking about nonsense physics. There's no curvature to space, so these curvature of space drawings don't make any sense. They're not real. They're, they're imaginary. They're part of Einstein's thought experiment, where he thought that non-physical space, what if it had dimensions and clocks? What would happen? Well, it doesn't. You have to have a physical substance that has dimensions and clock rates. And then you have to say how does this, that substance change its dimensions and clock rates due to interactions with other physical substances. That's the way physics works. You have to have physical substances. You have to have a matter or a material of some sort for physics to work. And then you have the particle theory problem. Protons and electrons decay. And neutrons only decay into protons and electrons. So protons and electrons and neutrons never decay. We have no known mechanism by which they decay. They also have degeneracy pressure, which means that two protons can never occupy the same point. Whenever they get close enough, they repel one another. And that's also related to the Pauli exclusion principle. Two neutrons can't occupy the same point, and that leads to neutron to density pressure, which gives us the density of neutron stars. Electrons can't occupy the same point, and that gives us electron to density pressure, which makes things feel solid. When this set of electrons touches this set of electrons, they hit each other and they feel solid. That's electron degeneracy pressure working. And also protons and neutrons have pressure. As we see in atoms, you can't have protons and neutrons occupying the same point in space. So matter is not compressible. You cannot compress matter 
to a singularity, not in real particle physics, not in particle physics we know from experiment. So the whole idea of a singularity is impossible. Stars at most can collapse down to neutron star density, the point where you have neutron degeneracy pressure, where you have the minimal distance between the center of the neutrons. And so that's what a real black hole would look like. Just a ma more massive neutron star. Which happens, you get a neutron star that turns into a black hole when its mass is about three times the mass of our star. So three solar masses. And once anything bigger than three solar masses that's at neutron star density will form a black hole. So, as I said, since space doesn't have dimensions by itself, all we can do is throw a flat geometry over the top of it and assume everything's flat. So, instead of curved space, real physics gives us flat space. And we have two flat spaces and no way to get from one point to the other. No wormhole. And that's even before we consider that even if you have a black hole, say two black holes, once you get to the event horizon, time stops. So all we would know is if you're observing from the outside is that someone reaches a black hole and time stops. They just sit there forever. Now you can look at it from a perspective of what's happening to, with that person, but that only makes sense if you're dealing with an infinite universe, an infinite universe in terms of length of time it exists into the future. And it's not even worth really thinking about that because it's not something that we can ever observe. So time stops. So there's no transition from the event horizon to the interior, even less to the interior of another black hole through all this matter that can't collapse because you're entering if you enter the core of the black hole, it's a neutron star. So, as people have hypothesized, you may be spaghettified at the boundary and then crushed to a neutron star density once you reach the central neutron star. So, the whole thing about wormholes is nonsense, it's science fiction. It's not something that real scientists should talk about like it's science, because it never will be science, it's just science fiction. If you want to be a fictitious physicist, fine, go ahead, but, but you should state that your work is fiction, not physics. Anyway, I hope you enjoy this video, and if you do, please like it and share it with your physics friends and your sci-fi friends. And then subscribe for my next videos. I've got a lot more videos about fictitious physics I want to do. And if you want to read about fictitious physics, I have a book called The 100 Greatest Lies in Physics, where I talk about 167 of them, and, but there are hundreds more. But anyway, I make some examples that are logical impossibilities or they violate quantum field theory or for some other reason they can't exist. Like they, they violate the, the fact that space is non-physical so it can't have physical dimensions. So if you want to learn more, you can buy that book or you can buy my, my Zero Point Universe book which talks about quantum field theory from the other direction where I build up the quantum field theory instead of tearing down the standard model. And I also have my particle theory book as well, which is talking about particle theory. 
And if you buy one of my books, that helps me support me support me during my retirement. So I appreciate that. And I hope you learn a lot from reading one of my books. And thanks for watching.